Sure. Um, so uh, welcome to this presentation of the Apache Tomcat enabling scripting languages in JSPs. My name is Ronnie Flatcher. Uh, I'm a professor for information systems at the Business University in Austria, Europe. So it's rather dark here. Um, good afternoon to the people in the United States. Good morning, other uh, the other parts of the world. Uh, I have been an Apache member uh, for uh, quite some time, working on the Apache Beam scripting framework many years ago, which also will play a role, a little role today. So these are the official slides of my university uh, that uh, I will be using. Um, here is a brief overview. Um, first, I just would like to talk a little bit about the motivation why the idea came up to have scripting languages uh, being deployed via JSPs, via Tomcat. What were the goals in um, creating or enlarging this uh, TechLib library? I will give you an initial teaser where a little application, um, the output of a little web app is uh, shown that has no Java code in it, but only script code. Uh, then I would like to talk about the implementation. Uh, how was the implementation carried out? What are the most important um, properties of this TagLib library? And then uh, I will be giving a few natural examples uh, with um, the scripting languages OREX, uh, JavaScript, Groovy, Jython, and PHP. And in the end, I would like to uh, demonstrate two small utility samples. One just um, turning back information about the server setup and one about the current invocation um, allowing one to get a deeper view into the um, state of the implicit objects, JSD objects that are available. And it uh, is intended with a small roundup to be ended and uh, open for questions. I have uh, all the samples that you will see also available directly uh, on a Linux uh, machine. Uh, I have uh, posted uh, the links uh, in the chat. Um, one link is for Tomcat 9 and the other link is for Tomcat 10, which is intentional because we have two different namespaces uh, in effect. And they just should demonstrate that this TagLib uh, library is available uh, for the Java Enterprise Edition and the Jakarta Enterprise Edition. Okay, uh, what was the motivation uh, to start out with uh, the creation of this TagLib library? Uh, the background is I'm teaching at the business university students who are not necessarily information system students and who are interested in learning programming, which is not an easy task, of course. And in the uh, course of 30, 35 years, it was my private challenge to come up with a scheme to uh, become able to teach interested business administration students programming from zero to creating uh, Java GUIs in one single semester, which in the meantime, I have been succeeding. And one of the ingredients is uh, the programming language, which is practically unknown, called OREX, which has a very easy syntax. It's dynamically typed, caseless, and message-based, like Smalltalk. Uh, it was created originally by IBM. It's a long story, which is not in the center of this talk. But uh, using this language, it has become possible to teach those business administration students programming from zero within a single semester, meaning four months and in a four hour lecture. In the middle of the semester, the people will be able, the students will be able to program even Windows and Microsoft Office uh, modules. And at the end of the semester, they will be able to program OpenOffice and even uh, exploit Java FX quiz. Um, so this is the background. Uh, the students have learned programming and they have been able to use Java because Java gets camouflaged as all recs. So in effect, there is a library that I wrote that camouflages Java as a, a dynamically typed caseless message-based language, but that's another story. So 
Um, when the semester is over, the students should become able to create little web applications. That was uh, uh, a goal that I have been considering for many years. And last summer, I uh, started out to uh, look around and come up uh, with an idea that got implemented into this Taglib library. So um, I looked at Tomcat, being an Apache member, of course, that, uh, that was, uh, was a no-brainer. Learning about the switch from the Java X to Jakarta um, namespace, uh, all these um, differences should be covered up. Um, the goals were, because they're business administration students, to make it as easy as possible for them to create web applications without using Java, but using uh, the scripting language OREX. Uh, therefore, it was a natural um, thought to try to use JSP's Java server pages, which, by the way, were the motivation for the Apache Bean scripting framework originally, which is a scripting framework for Java. But that's another story. Uh, but the motivation back then was to allow scripting languages to be used in JSPs for creating uh, server apps. Um, the infrastructure that, uh, that was to be created should not only benefit the single scripting language like OREX, but in general scripting languages. And the way to do this was uh, to um, support all scripting uh, languages that support in one way or the, the other the Java scripting framework uh, which is uh, defined in the package javax.script, also known as JSR223, Java Specification Request Group 223, which was the group that uh, created the scripting framework. I was serving there as an expert, so I have quite some insights of the discussions back then. Um, okay. Any language, um, no matter whether it's implemented in C++ or any other language or in, uh, in JVM, uh, any scripting language or any language actually that has an implementation of the Java X.script engine interface can be used in the Java uh, environment uh, for running programs in, the, in those languages. Um, programmers who are not acquainted with Java should still be able to use Java E or Jakarta E. That's uh, a very important goal. Uh, and one idea behind that was with these business administration students that end user programmers would become able to implement their own little server apps if need be. Um, it's also important uh, to know that these students need a lot of information when they develop. If there are errors, it's important for them to know exactly where the error comes from. And one, one goal was to make it as easy as possible to use uh, this tagly library, but also to debug and explore the infrastructure that is available to them. Um, programs in scripting languages should be invocable as if they were servlets, allow them to be stored externally in separate files as well. If you, uh, if you want uh, scripts uh, to be usable as servlets, they also need to receive arguments like the request uh, and the, uh, the response argument. And there's a third argument, the implicit out object that they get. What you see here is a little teaser um, where this is uh, a screenshot actually of the real uh, little web app uh, that got created with uh, OREX, JavaScript, Ruby, Jython, and PHP. The background is that the uh, WAR file that I created for this demonstration, it will be available for download, includes SQLite. Um, and um, what you see here is a ap little application where all the scripting languages insert a record into that SQLite database. Um, and if you run this uh, once, I did it yesterday, as you can tell by the date and the time, uh, you would get um, a table content like the one you see here. Okay, it's a single uh, JSP page um, instrumenting OREX, JavaScript, Groovy, Jython, and PHP. And there is no single line of explicit Java code that plays a role here. Okay. 
Um, okay, the implementation of the TechLib library exploits the JSPs. It's a tech library. It is supposed to support uh, Java uh, Enterprise Edition and Jakarta Enterprise Edition. You know the Tomcat up to and including version 9 uh, is in the Java namespace and starting with Tomcat 10, uh, it's the namespace Jakarta. There are two different taglips libraries, therefore. Um, the content is uh, functionally identical, but the namespace is different and they are prefixed with the namespace, Java X.script taglips.jar and Jakarta script taglips.jar. Um, the taglib libraries, both, both um, namespaces support the Java scripting framework, JSR223. But also, if you have older uh, scripting language bindings, you can also use the Apache Bean scripting framework. Uh, in this presentation, I'm only concentrating on JSR223 because that's the state of the art um, scripting framework for Java. The tag, uh, the tag library defines two tags. One is called script and the other one is expr for expression. The script tag um, uh, will have uh, any scripting script code that uh, you want to deploy. And you will have to print to the auto object in order to create text that gets uh, transported back to the client. Um, and it's quite straightforward. Uh, the expression tag is a little bit different in that uh, the code does not output directly to the implicit out object, but returns a string value that uh, will then be output into the stream uh, on behalf of the script code that uh, got executed in the expression tag. Uh, by default, any script invocation, no matter, no matter whether it's a script or expression tag, uh, we get three implicit JSP arguments in the order request, response, and out. Request and response is known from the servlet, of course. Out is the implicit object to uh, create the text, to print to it in order to create text that gets sent back to the client. Um, these three arguments will always be supplied to the scripts unless a tag uh, attribute named arguments is set to false. Okay. Exploiting the GSPs with the tag library is uh, actually very easy. Usually you only need the tag and uh, the type attribute uh, that defines the scripting language that you are, that is being used in the code that is uh, part uh, contained in the tag itself. There are quite a few other arguments that can be supplied. Uh, what you see here are the names of these arguments, which we usually don't have to use. And you see, uh, because they are optional, uh, they're, they're pre-preset um, values. So arguments is true, cache source uh, will, is set to true by default. And what it uh, relates to is if you store uh, script code in external files, the extern that, that script code will get cached by default because cache source is set to true. To set it to false, and the caching would not take place. On JSR223, it's possible to compile the script code if uh, the compilable interface is available. By default, this uh, will be set to true. Uh, there is a, an attribute debug which would show us additional information about the taglib invocation and about the JavaScript implementation. Uh, you will get to see an example of that. Um, name is an optional um, attribute where you can define uh, an arbitrary name for the tag uh, that contains the script you, you want to execute. And the purpose is if an, if an error um, gets thrown in that script code, that the name portion would allow you to identify uh, the element uh, in which the, the problem occurred. Reflect is set to false. This attribute would allow the script to get access uh, to the script uh, to the tag attributes. Slot is an optional uh, attribute which would allow you to supply any text that, sh uh, that a script can fetch for whatever reasons. Uh, there is a source attribute if your script code is stored externally in a file. And finally, there is the attribute throw exception which is set to false. Set to true uh, will cause the JSP rendering to be interrupted 
the server uh, would not uh, return uh, whatever was constructed until then. Um, good. Um, each JSP invocation uses a single instance of Java X script that script engine manager. In the JavaScripting framework, you have an engine manager that gets um, employed to load scripting engines that are uh, available. There is a service provider interface that gets exploited in the JavaScripting framework. Um, the script engine manager has uh, a method called get bindings. Bindings is a sort of a map where you have uh, a key as a string and the value is a Java object. And uh, the get bindings of the script engine manager will be always made available to any script engine as a global binding. Entries in these uh, bindings will be shareable among all um, scripting languages, for instance. So whenever uh, a single page is executed, uh, there will be a single script engine manager instance. If you use any scripting engine, there will be one single instance per page that gets instantiated to execute the script code. Each script engine implementation has its own bindings, which is the so-called engine scope bindings. Uh, they are made available via so-called script context, and the script context allows us to get uh, access to the engine scope bindings, which has an index value of 100. In these uh, bindings, you will find all the implicit JSP objects, such that scripting uh, languages can access them implicitly or explicitly. Um, the next thing uh, which is interesting is that you are able to share uh, objects among the scripting languages of a page and even with Java using uh, the global scope bindings, which in the script context has uh, the scope index number 200. Um, here is um, the statement that you have to supply to load the taglib. Okay, and the namespace uh, will be S in this example. If you have a script uh, tag, um, in this case of type rex, um, would be uh, followed by rex code, and that's the end tag for it. And the other tag that is available is the expression tag. Uh, here is an example for JavaScript with JavaScript code. So these are the two tags that are available uh, via this taglib library. What follows now are nutshell examples, very short examples in OREX, in JavaScript, in um, Groovy, and so forth. And all these uh, nutshell examples do the same. One is called hello world.gsp, where xxx will be replaced by the programming language. Um, the hello world will demonstrate the script tag uh, and say hello to the client. And the same script will be given another time, but this time the debug attribute will be set to true. And in the first example, I will uh, scroll with you through the information that gets generated by this debug attribute. And uh, the other uh, JSP is called um, request object, where XXX is again uh, replaced by the scripting language. And uh, these little natural examples just demonstrate how the implicit JSP request object can be used and exploited by the scripts. So what you see here is the first Hello World example. It's complete. It's uh, in the ORX language. Here you see the taglib uh, reference, and we have two different scripts in this uh, JSP. One script uh, just out th th says the output statement of uh, Rex, and dot daytime is the class date and uh, tilde new. Tilde is the message operator and will create a new instance of a daytime. And it will return uh, this text. Uh, with the background in golden in a golden color and the date time of the invocation. And the same script tag uh, is available down here. It's identical, except for the fact that the debug attribute is set to true. So um, let's uh, take a look at the first script tag. This would be uh, the output. 
you see the dynamically generated text with the golden background. And the second script uh, will uh, create, uh, once it's um, executed, uh, that's the part down here, will cause uh, these information to be generated as well. It's uh, meant for debugging web applications where they are being created. So here you have uh, context uh, informations. What is interesting uh, is the TechLib uh, invocation related information. You see here, for instance, uh, the script engine manager object with its hash uh, value. Here you see in this particular case, it's the rec script engine instance. Here you see the beginning of the script for debugging purposes. The attributes that are uh, Get, uh, that are in effect for this invocation. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, the file name. Uh, here you will learn about the JSP name. And if you have the name attribute set, uh, you would get the name of this particular script that gets executed. It's a JSR223 tag lib and so forth. Then uh, you will get the back information about the implicit objects that are uh, available in this invocation. And finally, you get information, debug information about the concrete script engine that is uh, being used for executing this script. Okay. And here you would have all uh, JSR223 related information, which is interesting for any scripting language. That's the reason why I take a little bit time to point you out uh, at uh, this feature that is available. Um, okay, and then finally, after the debug information, you have uh, the second dynamically created uh, output in uh, in this uh, HTML file that the client receives. You, you can play around with this uh, via the links that I have submitted in the chat. Uh, the second example is the, uh, is the request object example, which uh, demonstrates how to use those uh, implicit JSP objects from any scripting language. In this particular type, uh, the Rex engine is being used. And I mentioned that any script uh, that gets invoked will get three arguments, the request, the response, and the out argument. So uh, in the case of Rex, I would uh, I use here the, the argument fetching statement, use arg request. And then I just send the get request URL message, which causes this method to be invoked. It returns a Java object, which will be turned into a string with sending it the message to string. Um, and the same uh, happens here with the request URI. The result of running this program uh, looks like this. Uh, the request um, tilde is the message operator get request queue. That's the string that um, gets returned. And here you have the URI for it. And what follows now are um, the same examples in the different scripting languages. And um, I will give you a brief page with the hello world output and the request example. Here we have uh, the same functionality implemented in JavaScript. In this particular case, Nashorn is being used, which is available in the Java distribution up to uh, and including OpenJDK 14. Okay. Each JavaScript implementation has its specifics, but uh, this is a real code that gets uh, executed. Um, in this case, both uh, code uh, snippets are exactly the same, except that the Java, the second script um, has the debug statement set to true such that you can inspect uh, the implementation uh, details of the JavaScript Nashorn uh, scripting engine. And here you see the same um, um, example for using the request object. Now here, uh, there are two things that are notable, uh, one thing that is notable and used in two places. It is possible for JavaScripting uh, engines that they make um, any entry in the global and engine bindings implicitly available to their scripting, um, to, the, to their scripts. It's very much like uh, in the HTML JavaScript world, where you have access directly to the document because it's implicitly registered with the language. 
And that is the case for the implicit out, uh, implicit request, and all the other implicit JSP objects. So it's directly, uh, out is directly usable from JavaScript, uh, out.println, and then uh, the request object is being used to get the URL and here the URI. Okay. So the result will be in this case that uh, you would get the debug information, but uh, due to time uh, restrictions, I'm not showing you all the pages. If interested, you can look at them uh, via the, the demo links that I uh, sent over the chat. Okay, and here would be the output of the request example. Okay, and you see here's the JavaScript uh, request object dot Java server page, uh, and here's the URI of it. Here's the groovy example. I just have to, to watch the time um, where anyone who knows groovy or Java will get uh, acquainted with the code easily. Okay, uh, and again, there is no explicit Java code here. In, in all of these natural examples, only the, um, the script code uh, that is in effect is given. Okay, uh, and here you see the output then, hello world by Groovy. You see the Groovy uh, script engine implementation and so forth. And here the request JSP output. Here we have the Jython example. Uh, again, the tag lib needs to be referenced, and here we have the code for Jython. Uh, there is one important remark I have to make. Uh, the Jython implementation of the JavaScript engine is wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting, but it's the case. Um, if arguments are supplied to script engines, uh, they are defined to be of type ob an array of type object. Interestingly, Jython uh, forces uh, a Java array of type string, and uh, that will cause uh, runtime uh, exceptions, interestingly, because the Jython engine cannot handle uh, the array, object array, uh, properly. But uh, the taglib library has the arguments um, uh, attribute, and if you set it to false, no um, arguments will be hand it over to the script invocation, which solves this problem. Everything else in here is uh, JSON style. Here the same uh, with the request object example. Uh, what is also interesting, um, the request object and all the other JSP objects are implicitly uh, registered with Jython. Okay. Here's the output, uh, which is Jython related. Uh, and here the request um, example. Here we have uh, an example in PHP, which was, by the way, uh, also the motivation for Sun back then to come up with the JavaScripting framework. They tried to address the PHP world and make it attractive for them uh, to, to drive them to Java, to Java Enterprise Edition solutions. Uh, this is uh, PHP code, who knows PHP, of course, uh, it's straightforward. But it's also the case that here all the JSP uh, implicit objects are available directly as well. Here is the request object example. And the output for PHP would look like this. Uh, each time you, you would reload the page, uh, the instance of the script engine manager and of the script engine would change, of course. OK. Um, this is already the mechanism that um, one needs to understand. It's not difficult, as you have seen. And you can use any scripting language for which uh, a JSR223 or BSF engine implementation uh, is available. OK, uh, there are two little utilities uh, that I would like to point out to you. They are implemented in Rex, and that has to do with my students, they, they only know uh, all Rex if they have never uh, learned to program before. So this is uh, these are little utilities uh, that they can use immediately. And for them to handle it, it they, they got implemented in Rex. If you wanted to use them, it's not difficult to, to install Rex and the, uh, the Java or Rex bridge and take advantage of these little utilities as well. 
What is interesting, um, independent of the implementation language, is the usage of the source attribute, which allows us to denote the path uh, to the script file, which contains the code that, in this case, the Rex engine should, um, should um, execute. Cache source is set to false to not cache uh, the external code, such that if you change the external code, the next time you reload this Java server page, the new version will be in effect. Uh, the effect of uh, this is uh, it, it gives you information about the server setup, uh, taglib related Rex information about the Rex language, about the Java bridge, and finally, uh, the Java system properties, which are quite interesting to, to study. Okay. So here is an example of the Java 9 uh, Tomcat. It was um, run on a Mac. I, I developed this, uh, these slides on a Mac. But actually, now I'm running on, on Windows. And uh, the server URLs that I sent to you are on a Linux machine. So all of these uh, samples work unchanged on all those operating systems. And Tomcat is incredibly easy to set up and to use, I can tell by watching my students, by the way. And here's a, a utility which might be interesting for, for the Java pros as well, um, as it dumps all the implicit object information. And to invoke it, uh, you would also invoke it uh, from, a, from an external file. You can um, inject the script tag anywhere in your JSPs if you want it. And uh, the output um, is just, the, uh, the, I, just took, I just took the screenshots of two pages. But you will see here all the implicit um, JSP objects. And here you see the dumping of the methods and if attributes are available, the values of the attributes um, in the application object. So there is an add filter method. Uh, I cut off uh, the screenshot, you would see different signatures on the right-hand side here. Uh, the next page uh, would uh, show us alphabetically sorted all the method names. And here, where, whenever you have attributes, uh, the Rex script will try to, to uh, get the value of uh, the attribute. And in the case that an attribute returns an enumeration or any other collection, it will show us um, the current content of the collection. And this is actually very interesting uh, in many aspects as you get um, an overview of all the functionality and attributes available to us for a certain JSP invocation. For the students, it's, it's quite cumbersome initially, but then they get up and running quite quickly. It's very nice. So this was uh, a quick presentation of uh, this um, taglib library. Uh, the tag library allows any JSR 2223 or BSF uh, scripting language to be used in JSPs. Um, if you are deploying such solutions on Tomcat 9 or smaller, just uh, download the javax.scripttaglibs.jar on Tomcat 10 or higher, the Jakarta version. Um, any JSR223 BSF uh, scripting language can be used. Um, Java objects can be shared among Java and scripting languages in the form of the script context bindings. But uh, the teaser that I showed you in the beginning of my presentation uses uh, the request object and its set attribute and get attribute. So uh, there is a Rex part in this teaser which fetches uh, the data source inserts uh, a record into the SQLite database, saves the connection with set attribute in, a, in the request object, such that the next script, which is in Java, which is the JavaScript, then Groovy, then Python and PHP, are able to fetch the connection object. Okay, so this is quite a handy infrastructure that is available uh, in um, in this environment. Um, what else it becomes possible with this infrastructure, with this taglib library, uh, for non-Java programmers to create web server applications with Tomcat. Usually only Java programmers would use Tomcat to create web applications, but there's so much more to Tomcat uh, if you take this point of view. 
people who are not able to program uh, uh, safely in Java, but are um, able to program in scripting languages, all of a sudden can take advantage of Tomcat and all its supporting infrastructure. Okay. Um, okay. Um, then there is one page uh, where you will have a few links, maybe um, to our interesting... Uh, yes, that's the link uh, where the TechLib library can be downloaded. It is generally available since today. Uh, there is a um, WAR file called Demo Apache Software Foundation 2021, um, which is exactly the, the WAR uh, application that uh, the links point to. Uh, there is one article that introduces the Rex programming world to students into the world of servlets, JSPs, and uh, goes into details about the script taglips. And there are two short natural examples that then demonstrate how to take advantage of it. This is interesting also for people who are not uh, caring about or Rex or whatever, but it explains the TechLib library. And then as a proof of concept, I had uh, one student in the summer semester who created as a bachelor thesis a little self-contained web shop with card uploading of uh, product images, uh, mail newsletter, in all recs in this particular case, using Tomcat. And uh, the, uh, the, the bachelor thesis can be downloaded here and also the code going with it. And here are uh, a few uh, further links. One remark to Nashorn JavaScript. Ja Nashorn got removed from OpenJDK 15 on, onwards. And in the meantime, there is a Nashorn module available for, for those Java versions, such that you can supply uh, the Nashorn JavaScript engine on Java uh, larger than uh, for Java 15 and higher.